Hello, thanks for joining us for another Insight Tech Talk. I'm Kate Mayer with the Insight Solutions Go to Market team. I'm joined today by Joe Flynn, Director of Services and Distinguished Engineer with Insight Solutions. Organizations have broadly adopted remote or hybrid ways of working, which also requires new or better ways of IT provisioning. But there is a perception that current processes can't be changed to meet a modern provisioning approach. Today, we're going to address some of these misconceptions and discuss how solutions like Microsoft Autopilot and Surface allow organizations to kickstart their shift to modern. Welcome, Joe. Hey, Kate. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks for joining us today. So let's get started. Can you start us off by helping us understand what we mean by legacy imaging and provisioning? What does that mean? And why is that an outdated model? Yeah, if we talk legacy, let's even jump back prior to what we consider what's legacy today. And if we look at where imaging started, Ghost back in the day was the biggest one where images would be multicasted across networks. And you had to worry about when you were doing it and would you bring down the network and people working. Ghost transformed to Microsoft at that time re had remote installation services, RIS, to System Center imaging, to MDT. And System Center has been around probably the longest. And where System Center we consider legacy today is it was built for an on-prem environment. So it was built for users being in the office, the devices being in the office on a trusted network. And the problems you're finding with System Center today is there's usually a golden image that customers set up. And that golden image could be six to nine to 12 months old because there's processes that have to be done to maintain those images. But now when we shift to where we are today, if I get a user a device remotely and that image just say is outdated, now they have to find ways to update it. They have to find ways of how they're gonna get the applications to it. And let's not forget system center being on-prem and a user now being remote, how do you get the user to log in for the first time? Right. And that's where security comes in. I mean, we have organizations, even today I'm talking to, where they're logging in as those users before they send the devices out. They have to request passwords for those users. And that's where legacy wow. is definitely something that needs to be looked at as legacy. And how do I use the modern technologies to improve my processes? Great. So what's that? that's the old model. Um, can you walk us through a bit of what's the new model of imaging and provisioning? Yep, so if I'm tying it to Windows specifically devices, the new model is what we call Microsoft Autopilot. So it's the term provisioning. So in imaging, we used to take a nice brand new device that let's say had Windows 10 on it. We would wipe that nice clean Windows 10 uh, OS on it, put our own version in our own settings. With provisioning, we're taking the operating system that's on the device and we're simply installing or setting up the configurations, the apps on top of what's already there. So we're leveraging what the OEMs are sending us. Um, so, and the benefit of that is, is now I'm not reinstalling. I'm getting the latest uh, OS potentially at the time the device ship, but then the tools also allow us to update these devices over the air. So a user can be remote, they could be in the office, they could be traveling. Let's say someone has a broken device and you need to ship them out a replacement device. I can send the device all, all the way to a hotel. And as long as the user has internet connectivity, they can provision that device. I think the easiest way I can explain it to customers is take what you do today in the mobile world. You can go to a store, buy a phone. You can and then you turn on that phone. We almost essentially know exactly what to do, right? Phones don't come with instructions or directions. We know turn it on and you go through the step-by-step -step process. Autopilot is identical. You put in your username, you put in your password, and now your applications are coming down, your data is coming down, your preferences and everything you would require on that device are coming down. So you're taking that consumer experience in the mobile world and you're driving it to the corporate world on a Windows laptop, desktop or type device. Wow. And I have to imagine too, huge security benefits with that type of approach. Yeah, because if you think of the legacy model, previously I was I would have to ask you for your password, right? right. I have to log in as Kate and, right. you, and I know your password, which I'm not one to willingly openly share my password so I can no. get a profile on that device and ship it out. What you would have to do the first day you get that device, oh, I get to reset my password because now Joe Flynn knows it. Hey, and maybe I trust them, maybe I don't. And with the new autopilot process, I don't have to know any usernames, any passwords. You simply just need network connectivity and the users logging in with their own credentials. Right. That's great. So in terms of, I mean, obviously from, you know, just a user experience perspective, security perspective, um, a, from an IT perspective, ton of benefits. Are we seeing broad adoption of, of autopilot in this solution? Yeah, I would say 
it is blown up for us, even from an insight perspective. So I'll just give you some basic numbers. In 2019, we had insight probably uploaded roughly nine, only 900 devices for the year into autopilot. So it was fairly newer white glove provisioning just started to come out in 2019. In 2020, we saw that jump probably almost 40 times uh, from 2019 to 2020. Uh, now, keep in mind, the pandemic started hitting and companies really started making that shift to modern. In 2021, we saw another 50 times increase from 2020. So companies are now driving that direction. They're seeing that, hey, how do I deal with my remote users? How do I increase that employee experience? And now in 2022, we're looking at doubling what we did last year from an autopilot perspective. So the number is just skyrocketing up from driving from an autopilot or provisioning methodology. That's great. And so when we when we think about then um, for let's say we're looking at large enterprises, um, there can be right uh, potentially a lot of customization or complexity or, or sort of specific processes. How does autopilot work in organizations that have a lot of complexity and specific processes? Yeah, so complexity is a key word there, and everyone's opinion is different for what is complex. And I think sure. the conversations we see customers having is everyone thinks their environment is the most complex, and it very well may be for their specific purposes. Sure. But when you step back and look at many organizations, there's a lot of commonalities across all organizations, right? Um, what's complex, what's not complex. And what customers have to understand is how you've done it the past 10 or 15 years, right? It's good for the time period you've done it in. But you have to actually step back and understand, I overcame a lot of complexities based on what the technology allowed me to do. But now modern technologies are allowing me to take it way to the next level. So how I did it yesterday is not going to be the same how I do it today. I can accomplish the same things and I can probably do many more things with the technology. So if you look at it, if I narrow it down to a few items on how do I get to the autopilot side? Yes. Most customers, you have to worry about two main things is the biggest thing. One is a shift from group policies or security from an on-prem active directory model to a cloud model. Second is applications. How, what applications am I delivering via the device management platform I have today? Could be System Center, it could be Altiris, could be Landesk, but I gotta get those applications from on-prem to a cloud model. Those are the two biggest pieces where customers make the shift. And when we talk to customers, we're like, start small, right? Start with an MVP approach. Let's take a specific set of users, let's take a specific organization and let's shift them to that model. You can do it through attrition. So as your devices are starting to, uh, let's say end a life, and as you buy new devices, move them into that modern provisioning method and supportability. That's the biggest thing I can see. But, and as we're talking to customers, devices do matter. I mean, if I can look at all the OEMs and the Microsoft Surface devices make this much easier because it's Microsoft owns the operating system. Microsoft now makes these devices so drivers are more seamless. It's doing BitLocker encryption, taking advantage of what the cloud services have on a service device, make it a ton easier. And if I look at the modern management platforms, once I get a device into autopilot, that's the first for instance a surface device, right. now I can potentially surface only. I can see warranty information on a device, end of life information on a device all through that seamless process. Hugely valuable for organizations Correct. to have that type of visibility and and um, you know sort of one screen one one screenshot of everything there. So that's oh, great. Absolutely. Yeah. When we think about then um, insight and what we are doing differently from a solutions perspective and in specifically around autopilot, um, walk us through that a little bit. What is insight doing differently there? Yeah, so autopilot can be done at a customer level. So a customer can absolutely do autopilot themselves, but it is, it's not as easy. They have to turn on every device. They have to get a specific code off the devices and they can perform that upload themselves. From an insight side of the world, we're trying to take the complexity away from that customer and automate the entire process. So if a customer buys a device through us, as soon as that device ships, we're programmatically with APIs capturing that information uploading it to the customer's tenant. So when the customer gets the device, it's ready to go. They can turn on the device and they can provision it. The best part is, and what we're trying to drive customers is, don't ship your devices to IT anymore. Order the device and ship it to the end user. Because if we can automate that upload and that association to your tenant, the end user can open it up out of the box and simply provision it themselves. But then we have the ability to take it one step further is because Insight does so much with devices. We have our labs, we have our depot warehousing. 
where we can actually pre-purchase these devices. And with today's supply chain issues, that's actually pretty important because we yes. can purchase these devices or these devices ahead of time, store it for the customer. And this is where we drive, where we can take that device and now we can pre-provision it. So it used to be called autopilot white glove is now pre-provisioning where we can simply turn on the device for a customer and pull down everything from an Intune side of the world. So all the settings, all the applications, all the policies, again, without knowing usernames, passwords, or connectivity to the customer's environment, and then ship it to the end user. And the benefit there is we can asset tag it, we can kit it. So if the customers happen to buy, let's say a Surface device with a Surface mouse, a Surface docking station, we can put all of that into the same box and ship it to the end user. The key difference is, can the end user do it themselves? Absolutely. But depending on the end user's connection and what they're deploying, it could take 45 minutes, hour to an hour and a half. Sure. If Insight can do like the pre-provisioning, we can take all that time that's on the end user side and do it in our labs environment. So now when the end user gets it, they're at a, a productive desktop, maybe in three to five minutes. So it improves that employee experience right out of the gate as soon as the employee opens the box. I mean, that's pretty incredible. And, you know, I'm an end user, you're an end user. Like if I had that and it, it's completely ready to go, it has everything provisioned, every application I need, it's security, it's set, everything is is um, is ready for me to then go and do my work and be productive. That's a, that's a pretty powerful um, enabler for organizations to have that. So that's great. Well, I really appreciate your time today, Joe. Thank you for catching up on Autopilot and Surface. This was a great conversation. Absolutely. Uh, great conversation. I think one thing I want to say is for anyone listening to this is take a step back and understand what you've done for past 5, 10, 15 years. Absolutely. It was probably the best way you could do it at that time. Technology is moving so fast. Like we barely keep up and we live in these technologies. So just understand like what's available to me out there, especially knowing what I may have purchased from a technology perspective. And then how do I get the most value out of it to improve my employee experience? Great advice for organizations. So thank you so much, Joe, for joining us today. And we look forward to another Tech Talk with you soon. Thank you.